Okay. So with that, let's now go into balancing the following equation. So, okay, we have to balance the equation, but it's very important in basic conditions. And you know, phases are optional. But what does it mean to be in basic conditions? And that means, okay, in this case specifically, there's a surplus of hydroxide ions, OH minus. That is what it means. So this is a thing you're going to be probably throwing into the equation if you need to balance some things out. Now, with this, we're going to break down step by step what we should do to answer a behemoth of a question like this, because it can get quite complicated. And if you do try to just balance it out based on what you see, you most likely end up lost because you don't really know where to go from there. So with that, let's write it out. So CO, so cobalt chloride, this is an example of an ionic compound, by the way, plus sodium oxide. It probably has a different name, though, because this is a different one. You notice it's Na2O2. Usually, you'd see Na2O. So this one's already very strange. And this turns into cobalt hydroxide, COH3, like that plus Cl, that's chlorine, and sodium. And they're just kind of floating there as ions, okay? So this is what we have as our starting equation. Now, I'm gonna break this down by steps because it's very important that we do this the right way. At first glance, you're probably just gonna see like, oh, I need to balance out the chlorine or the sodium. Those ones can wait. The first thing we need to do here, okay, as number one, first step is to write down uh, oxidation number okay so an oxidation number is a number given to the element in question based on what charge it should have and there's a list of certain things that come with an automatic oxidation number meaning that the other one is bonded to has to adjust for it Perfect example, based on the one we're starting with actually, chlorine and cobalt chloride wants to be minus one because that's just its natural state. Okay, and that's the one we refer to because it's the halogen, it's one of the stronger um, one of the str stronger reduction agents. You will notice that if we actually go to the periodic table, uh, when it goes from bottom left to top right, so all the way, it's kind of like an arrow that points upward this way the stronger its um, electronegativity. And that means fluorine up there is like the strongest uh, reduction um, well, oxidizing agent because it likes to be reduced. It likes to take an electron, okay? But that's just extra information. But the point being overall is that chlorine really likes to be that negative one. But there's two of them, meaning that cobalt has to make up for it, okay? So that means it needs for it to have this charge in total to be a net charge of zero, this has to be a negative two, I mean a positive two, sorry. And with that, it means that cobalt's whole thing, since only one of them, is positive two. So now we know the oxidation numbers for these elements here. And we do the rest for this one. Now sodium is actually on the opposite spectrum. That's the one we use. So because it's not a transition metal like cobalt, it kind of has a set state. Because it's an alkali metal, it always likes to be plus one. Okay. And there's two of them, so that means plus two. And that means oxygen has to make up for, by, for it by B minus two. And that means this oxygen here is minus one. Normally, as you'll see later, oxygen likes to be minus two, but there are a few exceptions, such as that one, okay? Now let's move on to this cobalt, um, cobalt hydroxide, okay? We start with the hydrogen. That one, except for very rare scenarios, it always likes to be plus one, okay? So right above it, right above his little head, plus one. And oxygen, like I said, especially when bonded to hydrogen, likes to keep its minus two, okay? So with that, we have a minus two, plus one. In total, this is going to be negative one, but there's three of them, so in total, this is negative three. That means this cobalt, unlike the previous one, instead of it being plus two, it's now plus three, okay? So that's the, what we're dealing with there. And now, with that, 
Uh, we now move on to the chlorine. It just has a minus there, so this is going to be minus one. Sodium just has a plus, so this is just going to be plus one. So we successfully written down the oxidation numbers for everything, and now what we want to do is see what's changed. Okay, so we notice that this went from a plus two to a plus three, and oxygen went from a minus one to a minus two right there. Okay, and these are the equations we balance first because that way we don't get lost. So the new equations, well, just a, a half equations, would be so cobalt 2 plus, that's what it was, turns into cobalt 3 plus. Now how is this possible? Only way this can happen is if cobalt loses an electron. When you lose an electron, you become more positive. Meaning that on the product side, there's gonna be an extra electron just you know, relaxing, chilling, not doing much. So now we have to write down the oxygen one. So oxygen goes from minus one, turns into oxygen two minus, okay? Whoops, let me keep it consistent, one minus. You usually don't see that, you just see a negative, so let's keep it like that, keep it consistent. So now, for it to get more negative, it needs to gain an electron, so you need to write the electron in the positive, I mean in the products, in the reactant side. So on the reactant side, you see an electron plus oxygen makes that. And now you go back to the equation, you see that there was two of these oxygens. So that means you have to just put a two in front of it, and it'll make two of these in the products. At least that's what it should do in the products end. We won't fix this side, we're just seeing what's happening initially. Okay, but the only way for this to happen, for it to now change two oxygens, you need two electrons. And because now you want to balance these two out, these are the two equations you're balancing. You notice that there's two electrons going to the products, but only one coming out. I mean, into the reactants, but only one coming out out of the products. So you need to double this equation here in order to make up for it. So in actuality, you have two, two, and two. And now the two electrons from the product side will cancel out with the two electrons from the reactant side. And this right here is the equation you're going to be working with to balance out the rest of it, okay? So that was step number two, okay? Just to write it down, balance equation based on electrons and, and change in oxidation number okay and now let's go to step three what you want to do step three is kind of just fill in now that we have this stuff we use that to fill into the equation what we started out with so now that we know that was there's two cobalts involved instead of it being ClCl2 we have two ClCl2 plus N a 2O2. This one doesn't change because we already said there was two oxygens. And that turns into 2 C O C. I mean, whoops. Got so used to the first one. C O O H 3 plus C L minus plus N A plus. So that's what we have right now. But quickly, we can make some changes as we're filling it in because we see 2 C O C L 2. That means there's four chlorines in total that are working. This one only has one. We need to multiply this by four. Na2O2, same thing. Only two sodiums, so we need two more. I mean, only one sodium, so we need to double it. That's what we have right now. Now, at step four, you notice that, hold up, wait a minute. There is now a net charge on this side of negative two. But this net is zero. How do you fix that? Well, finally, that's where the hydroxide plays in because it's in basic conditions. And when you have basic conditions, you have free roaming hydroxides, OH minus. And that's key because that minus is what's gonna use in the reactant side to balance out the net charge, okay? So, fixed charges with OH minus. So now, we're gonna get OH is fill in. Now how many do we need? 
to make it a net charge of minus 2 like this side we need to then add two OHs so now as our equation we're going to have two OH minus now we fix the charge two COCl2 plus Na2O2 turns into two COOH3 plus four Cl minus plus two Na plus as you can see it's getting quite lengthy so now we've done that okay so our last component here is you know first we gotta check through and make sure everything's balanced so as I'm going through though the only difference right off the bat or well, actually two differences but the main one is that we have six hydrogens here okay because two times three six hydrogens and we only have two hydrogens here the next thing I notice here is that when I'm going through all of it there is two oxygens and then two more back here so we have a total of four oxygens okay but here we have two times three we have six oxygens so how are we going to make up for the difference here well, luckily something that conveniently adds <laughs> you know the four hydrogens missing and the two oxygens missing is water how many specifically two of them because two h2o and this right here is our last component in redox reactions okay because it depends on which conditions they specify but usually whenever you're now missing components specifically only hydrogen and oxygen you see how you can fill it in with water but that only works after you've gone through each and every one of these previous steps so number five that's gonna be fill well not fill more like add water if need be that's step five and we see here only place we need to add water is in the reactants and the reason why it wasn't added before as you can see when you balance equations sometimes water isn't really used in the reaction in this specific case in this redox reaction it is so now that we've added water our full formula is going to now be 2COCl2 so the original plus Na2O2 plus the hydronium ions we discussed earlier plus water and that turns into 2COOH3 plus 4Cl minus plus 2Na plus barely fit there Whew, close one and now with that last check we're just gonna see if everything is properly balanced and while we're checking if it's balanced, we're actually going to compare with their answer here. Um, so we have two cobalts. So let me just highlight it to keep track. Two cobalts. Two cobalts. Four chlorines. Four chlorines. Two sodiums. Two sodiums. Two, four, six oxygens. Six oxygens. Two plus four so six hydrogens and six hydrogens and now the charge we have from this minus two net charge and from this minus two net charge this is now fully balanced okay and now let's see what they got here so interesting enough they did it a little bit of a different way they're saying that you should balance the half reactions the only issue I have with it is that you notice that we go from uh, cobalt chloride to now cobalt hydroxide plus chloride. We don't really see where the hydroxide came from. And then when they go through the question, you end up with the hydroxides, but you kind of wonder how they did it. So when they say just balance the half reactions, it can get a little bit tricky there. It does depend on whether or not they provide these half reactions fully in terms of like the list of uh, different half reactions when you go through the electronegativity but if they don't that's why you first should start with right now the oxidation number that way you know exactly what's changing because it's kind of just going at glance at eyes view you might get lost in it so let's just skip then to the end because they just say to balance the first half reaction the second one 
uh, but let's just see how uh, if they got at least the right answer. So when we compare 2CLOCL2 plus 2OH minus plus Na2O2 plus 2H2O, perfect. It goes to 2COOH3 plus 4Cl minus plus 2Na plus. Awesome. So they at least got the right answer, but I would definitely go with this technique here. So oxidation number, balance the equation based on that oxidation number change and the electrons that are moved. You fill it in and then you fix the charge difference with OH minus and then you add water if need be, okay? So let me just leave a quick comment, correct, but start with oxidation numbers and balance from the change in oxidation numbers, okay? So that's what we have there for question two.